Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Hiding from the sun. It's really toasty over there. The searingness of the sun just cooks you. I have the UPF sleeves and everything, but still too much. I have a plant spotlight. You, you want to talk about a fun plant? In last week's video, I had a plant haul. I've been doing, there's been some plant shopping going on, getting the year kicked off. And I managed to check off one of my wish list plants. You know, garden community, we always have our wish list plants. This is one that's been on my list for a long time. I'm always striving for a tropical vibe out here to get nice, big, bold, glossy green leaves out into the landscape, which can be difficult to do here in zone six, uh, zone seven, we've changed. We're zone seven now. So what I have right here is a plant that offers everything I want and a perennial that's going to be cold hardy, have a big bold impact, nice flowers on them, and they're very versatile. Can use them in a lot of different design aspects and put them in a fair amount of places in your garden. So let's talk about it. Laugh when I say let's talk about it because I'm already probably a minute in by the time I even got to that point. This is Acanthus mollus oak leaf. Acanthus are wonderful perennials, generally for zones six and up. That's a very broad thing to say because you have your Acanthus mollus, you have your Spinosis hungariensis, probably more, but those are the three that I'm aware of and they're different cultivars within all of those species. The Acanthus mollus summer beauty has been a very popular one for a long time for being pretty heat tolerant. The appeal here with these Acanthus is these really big, long, glossy, green, heavily, heavily serrated leaves. You can see they have some serration on the inside, kind of fenestrated. If you want to go with that, an excellent plant dupe for the Philodendron bipinnatifidum. Now a thematophile, look at this picture. Come on, look at that. Isn't that glorious? Three to four feet wide, three to four feet high, big, bushy, round habit. An excellent plant for the border of the garden. Bright morning sun, the more warm your climate, like where I am, going to want to make sure that they get afternoon shade because it's very hot during the summer. I don't want to cook them. Want to make sure that they're well hydrated their first few years in the ground. And it only is supposed to take them a few years to reach that mature size. Put up giant spikes of beautiful flowers that are white with a mauve tint into them. Pollinators enjoy them. They're very eye-catching when they're in flower. I think equally as eye-catching when they're not in flower. And that's a combination that's not always that easy to find with perennials. Acanthus are plants that you grow for big impact and for ease. Once you plant these, you tend to have them for a pretty long time as long as they manage to establish themselves and survive their first few winters. This one's listed as a zone six. The summer beauty is also listed as a zone six. It's only generally when you get into the more, I don't know if I want to say rare, but the variegated types and some of the newer cultivars where you see them as zone seven and up. And that usually just means they need some more trials to see how cold hardy they are. Planting them near a brick wall or I mean any type of structure wall, that's going to help radiate some heat, keep the ground from getting as cold during the winter, making sure you mulch them really well. Those are all things you can do to help protect them during the winter time if you're not sure if they'll survive your winters. This one right here is just leafing out. You can see this is all of its fresh spring growth. This was shipped here right from Monrovia to a local nursery. So this came from Monrovia, California. Probably started pushing out growth, I'd say probably six weeks ago, something like that. I would expect this to easily be double the size by the end of the growing season because this is just the start. Look how long that leaf is. It's so long and so shiny. These are just the baby spring growth. You know, when they start going, not everything is all pushed out and mature and unfurled all the way. It'll probably be a few more weeks to start to see those big bold leaves on them. And it's, look at that leaf. Isn't that an absolutely gorgeous leaf? What a stunner. So much interest, so much texture and impact that these will have in the garden. I have a few more on the way because I have an area where I wanted to plant three of them along a wall. So they'll be seen not quite from eye level, so the wall's about three feet high, but they'll be an angler instead of seeing them from way up here, be looking at them more from like, kind of like this. They look beautiful on hillsides, at the edges of your garden. I've never seen an acanthus planted of any of the species and thought, oh, that doesn't look right there, or it doesn't look good. They're just beautiful plants. It's partially because they have that nice round rosette shape to them. And then when they're in flower, it's, you just can't help but look at because it's such a show. Once they've established for a few years, they put up lots and lots of flower spikes. In my experience with growing acanthus, the smallest they do like a very loose well draining fairly organically rich soil it doesn't have to be over the top because they're a pretty sturdy plant the of trouble i've run into with an acanthus mollus has been when they've been growing in a heavier clay type soil and i've heard people say that they don't have issues with that when it comes to the clay so it could just be the ph of my clay maybe we have different definitions of clay clay like you can stick your hand in the ground pull it out and make a pot 
it's very, very heavy. It has to go in a spot where the soil has been very well amended and it will drain well. And that's to avoid issues with rot. When it gets really warm outside, that's when trouble starts to creep in around midsummer in July when you start having triple digit temperatures and heavy rainfall and humidity. And then you have to route crown rot and root rot with the plant. So if you live in a climate like mine where you may have to deal with conditions like that, really hot, really humid and heavy rainfall, then having good airflow and that loose draining soil are gonna be important to keeping the plants looking nice. And slightly acidic soils are best. Did I mention that? I don't think I did. I've seen them get chlorotic very quickly when planted in soils that have a fairly high pH. If you're alkaline, then you're going to need to amend with something to bring that pH down and probably supplement some iron. I like cotton burr compost in the springtime. Does a great job of helping to acidify the soil. It's pretty stable add some nutrient into the ground and the plants always seem to enjoy it. Areas where I see an acanthus look their absolute best, just magnificent, is usually like the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. Oh my gosh, they look so pretty up there in the Pacific Northwest because they have the nice cooler nighttime temperatures. It doesn't get crazy hot during the summer. Amazing soil and lots and lots and lots of rainfall. Even though they're a plant that can take the dry shade, that's typically a characteristic of a lot of shade plants, right? Because there's usually a canopy above them, keeping them from getting a lot of water, right? With those cooler temperatures, they're usually planted out in areas where they're getting more sun than any place I could put them out here. So they can do up there because they get that rainfall and they have those cooler temperatures and the plants always seem to love them. That's what I was talking about when I said there's some versatility. I'm gonna have to grow them differently where I put them. It's not going to be the same as maybe where you can put them. If you live further south, you know, maybe you're down in Alabama, Mississippi, I don't know how it's gonna do for you. You're gonna have to put them back into the further shade. Light in the morning's totally fine for them and then dappled light throughout the rest of the day. It's the warmer your climate and the cooler, maybe you live by the Great Lakes, something like that, or you have a body of water nearby that helps keep temperatures from fluctuating all over the place. And if that's the case, you can give them more light. There's so many, you can do so many things with them. I also don't usually see them as large. <laughs> grown further south. I'm in St. Louis, so it's like the uppermost part of the south as far as weather is concerned. It's generally more when you get up to those climates I was talking about where maybe you have the lake effect or your Pacific Northwest where you really get really big, bold plants. Warmer the summers seem to be, then they don't tend to look quite as full and bushy. And that's to be expected, right? Because the further south you go, the hotter it is, the more shade these are going to be in the afternoon. And therefore the less of a full appearance the plant's going to have overall. Beautiful regardless, however you're growing them. I suggest giving them a try. Do y'all have a favorite variety? of acanthus. There are a lot of acanthus lookalikes. To me, the acanthus just have the perfect trifecta of everything I want to see in a plant that gives you the appeal of a tropical plant when it's not tropical and they're pretty low maintenance. Since you have them established, they tend to be around for a really long time. You gotta really dig out an area if you leave just a little bit of root scrap behind they'll usually put up more babies. And I love that. I love plants that'll be around for a long time. Offshoot, very close to the main growth. It takes them a fairly long time to fill out a wide area, despite them being a plant that will reach their mature size, generally just in a few years. Plant them from a small size, usually you only have to wait about three or four years until you have a nice three by three or four by four foot plant. I see them in cottage gardens, English gardens, formal gardens, all different types of things you can do with an acanthus. They're just fun to have around. I wish people would grow them more often. I don't know why they don't. Hopefully they'll catch on more. They were really popular for a few years when that summer beauty became easier to find and bigger growers started selling them and then those disappeared. That's enough. I could fan out about an acanthus all day long. I can't wait to watch this one grow. It's going to be at least double the size by the end of the growing season. These leaves will be absolutely huge and shiny. It looks so good. And like I said, I have a few more on the way. Really excellent plant where you can just plant a few of them and have a huge impact in the garden. Yeah, comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? You got some fun plants you're trying to work with this year? Or just say hi. I love talking to everybody. You can feel the heat radiating from that white area over there. Like I'm standing next to an oven. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.